Hi, my name is Jack Lynch. I'm here at MegaHobby.com, your source for all kinds of hobby products. And we're going to talk a little bit today about airbrushing. Uh, we'll call this seminar or little video Airbrushing 101 because we're going to talk about the basics of airbrushing for you guys that have always wanted to try it but never had the guts because you didn't think you could handle it. You can handle it. Um, so what we'll do, I'm going to put my glasses on so that I can see. We're going to talk about two different types of airbrushes and I don't mean brands, I mean the types of airbrushes, what they do and what they're capable of. There's two types of airbrushes available which would be a single action airbrush and a double action airbrush. The difference being with a single action airbrush you have to control the width of your line that you're spraying and the amount of pressure or the air coming out of the brush individually. You can't do it together. With a double action airbrush you can basically control airflow by pressing the trigger and pulling back on the trigger to make your line bigger or smaller. But with a single action airbrush you would have to adjust your line the width of your line with the nozzle itself while you're pressing the trigger. So you'd have to set it and then do it. You couldn't vary it as you went along. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, basically what I have here is two different brands of airbrushes. I have a Badger 150 double action airbrush and I have a Pache uh, internal mix double action airbrush. It's called a Millennium. Uh, so I have those two airbrushes. A um, little bit of equipment that you'll need to do airbrushing. You can use compressed air, so if you have a tank with a regulator, you have to have a regulator because you have to get the pressure correct. Or you can use a small hobby compressor. I have a Badger oilless diaphragm compressor. It's a Model 180. I've had this for 30 years, probably more, and it's never failed me. So knock wood, it'll do good today. Um, you can see here I have a pressure regulator mounted to the air compressor. That's so that I can regulate the air pressure coming out of the hose into the airbrush depending on what you're painting and what type of paint you use and how thin the line is you want to vary your pressure down between say 12 to 15 psi pounds per square inch and 20 to 25 pounds for bigger jobs where you want a lot of pressure so that's very important if you buy a compressor make sure you get a regulator so that you can make the pressure different you know adjust the pressure and vary it very important. And I also have attached to my compressor a little foot pedal. You can buy these at any yep. you can buy these at any hardware store or through an electronics company. Um, it's basically a, a what we call a sewing machine pedal that you plug your air compressor in and plug this to the power and when I touch it the air compressor runs. So you can put this under your foot and it's a lot easier to turn the compressor on and off. Okay, what else, what else? I have a little bottle here. It looks like a little bottle. And this is basically a product from our co uh, the company Vallejo who make acrylic paints. And what this is is, this is a little overspray catcher. In other words, when you're cleaning your airbrush, and you'll see me do this, and you have to spray thinner through it or, you know, acrylic thinner, you can put your airbrush right into this little bottle and spray the thinner and it gets trapped in here. There's a filter here and it makes it a lot cleaner when you're airbrushing. So that's a good product and it's also a really great stand for your airbrush when you're not using it. So we're going to take a look at a double action airbrush today and I have here a Pache airbrush and you can tell the difference between a Pache and a Badger very simply. It's red and blue. Pache's are always red, the handles, and Badger's always a blue handle. So if you don't know, when you go to the store, exactly what kind of airbrush you have, try to remember red or blue handle, and that'll tell you. So this is a double action pache, and I can tell it's a double action because when I press the trigger down, I can pull the needle backwards with one stroke. So in other words, single action, double action, single, double. It's like two actions, down, back. A single action airbrush would just have the down, single. So we're going to take a look at the parts on this, and I always save and make sure I have my cap for the airbrush. Why is that important? Because the needles in an airbrush are very, very delicate, and if you drop it, it could damage it. So, and when you transport it, you want to have the cap. So save the cap when you get it. Put it on there all the time when you're not using it. Uh, I'm going to strip this down just a little bit so that I can show you the internals and what to watch for if you take it apart. So the first thing you do, and you're going to need to know this to clean this airbrush. Cleaning is very important. We'll get to that too. So basically take off the back piece here which is the handle and the next thing you want to do is take the needle out 
to take the needle out, you just loosen this little nut right here on the back and then draw the back needle out. And you want to do this carefully because when you take the needle out, the trigger can pop out by accident if you tip it over because the, the needle holds the trigger in place. So basically I put my finger on the trigger and push it down to hold it in place and take the needle out. And that's the needle in the airbrush. Like I said, if you want to, you can take the, the trigger out, but that's not necessary, so we won't do that today. Um, and the last thing that you can take off the airbrush when you're cleaning is the nozzle head. In other words, there's two pieces up front. There's a front nozzle, and I'll take that off separately. And then on the inside, there's an inner nozzle piece that you need the, the wrench. So when you buy an airbrush, if you buy a Badger, you buy a Pache, they give you this little wrench. Put this in a safe place where you remember with your airbrush parts, whatever, but you're going to need this every time you take the airbrush apart. So this wrench fits right over. It's a crescent wrench and it fits over the nozzle. And basically I got to hold it, hold it tight in your hand and just, just give it a little torque and the nozzle will come off very gently or break anything. Okay, so there's also an inner nozzle inside the airbrush. So basically when you change your airbrush needle and nozzle, you change the needle and this inner nozzle on a pache. So I took that off and I'll put it down here. Now what I'm gonna do is discuss cleaning the airbrush. I'm gonna do that because we already have it stripped down. Now this is a process I do every time I use my airbrush and it's really important. I strip it down like this and clean it before I use it. That way I know there's no residue in it. And you're guaranteed that no matter how good a job you do cleaning this thing, before you use it the next time, there's gonna be some dried paint inside that you really should get out before you start. So the most important tool that you need in your arsenal to clean this airbrush is really simple. It's these little tiny brushes. And what they are is they're little nylon brushes. They look like the brushes you use to clean an electric razor head. Um, three different sizes. There's a large, a medium, and the most important one is this little teeny tiny guy. This little guy will get into all the little areas of this airbrush where paint likes to hide that you can't get to just by spraying thinner through it. So what I'm gonna do is, first thing I do is I strip it down. Then what I do is I look at the first, well the first thing I do is I take the needle, and I can see on my needle here there's a little bit of paint caked around the, the step. There's a step where it goes up into the head. So I have plain paper towels, you know, just what you'd buy at the grocery store. I use them like crazy, makes my wife crazy. So basically you can take that and say a little stiff brush or better yet, one of these little brushes. I'll use the medium brush and I'll keep a little bit of thinner next to me. And I think the last thing I sprayed in this airbrush and try to remember that too was Tamiya paint. So I'm gonna put a little Tamiya thinner into a little glass cup. I like glass. Use glass cups. Don't use plastic. Plastic is a, can be affected by solvents. So always get a little glass, shot glass, something like that. So I'm going to take this and what I'll do is I'll take this little brush, dip it in, and then scrub it right around that area where the paint is. Right up on the nozzle. And it came right off. And I can also put a little bit of this Tamiya thinner, and the Tamiya thinner is an acrylic base, so it's fairly safe for you. My suggestion is, if you're using any kind of solvent paint, if you're using enamels or anything that has a, a turpentine or mineral solvent, use a, a glove when you do this. You don't want to get that into your hands. The, the alcohol base and the water base aren't too bad. But So the next piece that I like to clean is the nozzle, the inner nozzle, and the inner nozzle is really important, and this is why it's important to have this little teeny tiny brush. I'm gonna just take this, take a little bit of the thinner on that brush, stick it into the nozzle, and just, you can see a little, I don't know if you can see, probably not, but there's a little bit of thinner coming out of the front of that nozzle. So I'll just turn it around on it, and just do the best job you can, because every bit of paint is gonna funnel right through this little nozzle, and if there's anything in there, It'll stop it. So you can also look through the nozzle at the end. It's tiny, but you can see light at the other end of the tunnel, so you know it's clean. And then basically, I'm gonna wipe this off here. And you can see there was a little bit of paint in there. Okay, so we've cleaned the needle, the inner nozzle. Usually the outer nozzles, the, the big one is usually fine. There's, you know, it's just air that passes through it. But the front nozzle that goes over the needle, sometimes paint cakes around on the inside of that. So 
I can take those little brushes again that I have and we'll take the medium, yeah, use the medium brush. Take that brush, put a little bit of thinner on it and put it inside the front of the nozzle gently and just move it around and that'll clean any residue that's in the front of the nozzle. So you can look at it, you'll see it's clean. So that's basically what you need to do to clean this thing deep down inside. Um, when you're spray painting, you'll shoot thinner or, or you know, acrylic thinner or thinner through the airbrush to clean out the paint that's in it. But when you're all done painting, this is what you have to do to really get it clean and get it ready to go again. So we're gonna reassemble the Pache air gun here. And the first step is to take the barrel. And I like to keep my finger on the trigger um, because that way it won't drop out if I twist the airbrush around. But sometimes these triggers are a real pain to get back in. Um, so I'm gonna take the inner nozzle which is the one that we cleaned with the little tiny brush and sit him, he seats right inside the front of there and then take the bigger of the two remaining nozzles and drop it over top and just screw it on. Then I'm gonna take the crescent wrench and I'm gonna give this outer nozzle just a little bit of a tweak until it feels tight. And you gotta be really careful because if you over torque this, it will break inside, the threads will break. So be very careful. Um, then I'm gonna take the outer outer nozzle Put it on here, tweak that down. So now everything's in there except for the needle and the needle, very careful. The needles are very fine points and you don't want to bend them. You got to be really careful because your spray pattern or how well your airbrush sprays coming out of here is dependent on how good of a uh, shape your nozzle or your needles in going into the nozzle. So just take the needle, slide it into the back, then tighten down the little nut on the back and you can find your handle, put your handle back on, and you're ready to go. So basically to test it, you just pull the trigger down, press it down, and if your needle slides in and out nicely, you're all set to go. So that's it, that's all we have. Um, thanks for joining us at megahobby.com. Visit us on the web, www.megahobby.com.